Thank you, Anka. Thank you, all of you, for joining me at this time of the day. I know it's challenging, and I very much appreciate that you are here. And my presentation turned up to be a very oversized. This is why I want you not to be surprised that I will be just going through some slides without getting into the content. I prepare slides because I expect some questions, and then I would like to be able to return to some slides, which otherwise I'm just passing through, in order to, uh, to answer the questions, if there are any. Um, right. uh, okay, here is my background. Uh, Anka already said so. Um, and uh, in what is relevant for my today's talk uh, is my trajectory of the fieldwork in in different countries among various refugee groups. Um, I've conducted research both in Poland with immigrants from different countries, uh, refugees from uh, different countries, and abroad. So uh, in Poland, research pertained to Chechnya, Karabakh, Ukraine, uh, Kosovo, Bosnia, refugees. It really spans a long, long time. In terms of the research abroad, I've conducted research with Syrians in Jordan and with Syrians in Turkey. Uh, that's, uh, and also my examples I'm going to share with you today uh, are really grounded in my field experience. Um, here is the outline. I don't know about you, but I prefer to know what's ahead. So I'm going to tackle three different challenges. The one pertains to the image of the refugee, the second trauma, and the third researcher. I think especially the third one is just about us. We are researchers, we are vulnerable, and very often we are not ready to recognize that. And I'm going to tackle on that subject. Um, why the concept of challenge got into the title. I'm just referring to two quotations from the Cambridge Dictionary and Collins Dictionary. Have a look. Yeah, I intend to challenge and I intend with determination try to convince you that I'm right. But of course you are more than welcome to challenge me. Yeah, uh, let's move to the uh, first challenge, which is the image of the refugees and the consequences of it. We have a look on the picture. That's on the Polish-Ukrainian uh, border, mother and the child. Try to notice the characteristic of that and have a look on that. Probably this picture is all too well known to all of us because it pertains to pretty recent strategy uh, uh, and strategy of the country and tragedy of the people on the Mediterranean. But uh, what are the generalization out of this picture? This is about the representation of the image of refugee in the social and academic discourse. How the refugees are presented? They are lost. They are lost in the limbo. Then they are limited to the body. They don't have faces. They don't have voice. They are mute. They are universal victims. They are helpless. And they need advocacy. They need fundraising and organizational relief and development programs. And in the representation of refugees, more often than not, women and children are in the focus or destitute elderly. None of them creates any sense of danger for the population. And in the publications, very often, reproduction of Western knowledge about and expertise about refugees perpetuates. And refugees' boundaries are really central uh, and centric around state and donor organization. 
So we may actually say that refugees are getting very essentialized identity. And this identity consists of physical needs and economic needs. This is who refugees are in the popular discourse. And uh, have a look on the quotation. Uh, meanwhile, I will tell you who the person is. Barbara Harrell Bond was the first director of the Refugee Study Center at Oxford University in Queen Elizabeth House. And her book, Imposing Aid, is very critical analysis of what Western helping organizations do for refugees. Have a look on the quotation. And please notice, this is from the book of 89. And not that much happen if you like to apply this to nowadays. Okay, we'll come to that a bit later. Here is the title of the movie of Barbara Harrell Bond about her, movie by Enrico Falsetti, and the uh, movie is available uh, on request from the, uh, from the film director. And this movie is also sort of history of the research on refugees in different parts of the world. This is why I really recommend you this movie because it gives critical insight how the research on refugees developed around years. And coming to the image of refugees, they are uh, counterpositioned uh, as far as the economic migrants are concerned. They are the one who's taking advantage, and that's a very common part of the discourse. They are coming here because they want to take our social benefits, they like to take our mm, positions, our jobs, and basically they are passive. While economic migrants, that's a very different story, we like them. They will contribute to our society, and they, will, they are brave, they are very ag agentic. Okay? So you may say that they are really on the opposite sides of the spectrum. And here the first point comes. Who is contributing to the image? Sadly to say, we, we are academia and we do contribute to this image. Why? Because if we organize conferences, then more often than not, they are about refugees, but not with the refugees. I know from my own experience how much effort I have to put into bringing refugees to the conference about refugees. And what I'm getting is the signal for organizers very often, oh, but they are not competent to talk. They will destroy order of the conference. They will be talking too less, too much. You know, it's not proper. You can talk on their behalf. And a couple of times, in fact, I sort of blackmail organizers. I could say either or. Or I'm in tandem with refugees, or I'm not at all. But that's the very common attitude. Refugees are not competent. And then it translates from the conference to publication, from the publication to popular media. And we as academia support this passive victimhood of refugees. But we are not the only party which contributes to that, which is very little of, yeah, of hope and consolation, but also mental health professionals, because they are using ethnocentric research instruments uh, which are causing misdiagnosis or overdiagnosis of mental disorders among refugees which prove they are victims indeed. And again, uh, have a look on the quotation from the recent uh, issue of transcultural psychiatry. This is a paper by Jarvis and Kiermaier, Canadian, psycho uh, the Canadian psych uh, psychiatrist. Have a look on the quotation. OK. 
Okay. All right. But then, uh, next question is, who is benefiting from such an image of refugees? At least two parties, political leaders, be because they are really taking benefits from in-country fear and division. And if you look on the discourse um, around refugees right now in Europe, you can see this very clearly. Refugees are the threat. So come, we, the, we will help you to fight against refugees. That's what the right-wing parties, the message they send. But not, not only political leaders, also NGOs. And you might be surprised why NGOs, people who are coming with the most noble causes, why they benefit? Because they need money. They have to justify their existence. And this is what they get if they will document that refugees need their service, right? So I think there are two groups which are really using that. And can we help? I would say the model of research, which we call it community participatory action research, are this is the model which might be helpful. But this is the model which means engagement with local communities, joint planning, implementation and evaluation of the research, but also changing the language. Instead of talking about the research subjects or respondents, we could say that's our co-researchers. And it makes the whole difference. They are not passive. They are not sort of the guinea pigs who are subjects uh, or even objects, but they are co-researchers. And in fact, they are co-researchers. We heavily depend on them, but we are not that happy to acknowledge that. And also, we as psychologists should be open, should be open uh, for learning, not only about other psychologists, but to learning from accepting psychologies of Buddhism, yoga, Islam. And as Anka said, I've been for a long time and still to some extent in psychology of religion. And I think if psychology of religion stops to be weird psychology of religion, we can gain a lot. And here is the book published by Routledge about model of Islamic psychology and psychotherapy. And I think this is a very important resource. If you like to build a questionnaire categories for open, for semi-structured interview, which is relevant to the other, to other population. I would say it's really important resource and I hardly recommend. Because some concepts which we are attributing with very negative value, like surrender to God, like uh, uh, believing uh, that God will solve for you a certain problem. In the framework of Islamic psychology gets completely different meaning and we really have to acknowledge that. And uh, then speaking of refugees, we have to deconstruct the, uh, we have to deconstruct the whole. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> we have to deconstruct the concept. The concept around several lines. And the first is the label. Uh, have a look. You are, that's very popular. You are talking about Syrian refugees, about Ukrainian refugees, refugees from the Middle East. Just have a look in the middle category, Ukrainian refugee. It's really enormous difference. You are talking about the Ukrainian mm, professional who was relocated to Poland by the company for which she was working in Ukraine. She's getting rented apartment. She's getting all the support. And then you have Ukrainian mother with no employment and with no prior work experience. Both are mothers with children, both are Ukrainians. But you are talking completely different people. And if you operate on such a general statement, you are completely misled yourself. And also, uh, 
our um, contemporary world brings very new categories of refugees. And uh, have a look on the, on the top, Scholars at Risk and ICON. They are two organizations with which I was involved over a couple of years. Scholars at Risk supports refugees from the countries which made them to flee for safety. A um, huge group of supported refugees were coming from Turkey and when the universities were closed. Many of them came also from Africa when they are getting into conflict with the authorities. Um, and uh, universities need to create uh, positions and help them to integrate in the new, new society. And ICORN, that's a very interesting organization. They are helping refugee artists, uh, hoping that they w when they are taken out of the oppressive regime, they will very soon recreate uh, their artistic capacities. And um, of course, this is not. And I think the concept of cruel optimism applies here very well. What is the cruel optimism? Well, the book by Lauren Berland, uh, but the cruel optimism says basically this. Uh, this. It exists when something you really want, desire, um, it actually makes obstacle for your flourishing. And I think what the icon, what scholars at risk do, it's a cruel optimism because they believe two years of stay permit will be enough for refugee artists to, uh, to continue writing in the new language. Mm -mm. No, of course not. Uh, and for a scholar, to start to be productive again when moved to Western University, it will be again enough. Mm -mm. No, it's so much of psychological problems, are so many difficulties that I would say, of course, this help is very valuable, but it needs to be attuned to reality and as far as it is, it's not. And then speaking of the construction of the image, we need to take into account three different periods of uh, being a refugee, location, dislocation, and relocation. What is location? That's the period in the life of refugee people before they have to leave or fly or run away. This is still in the country of origin, but some Disturbing facts are taking place, ethnic cleansing, military cap, and so on. But uh, look uh, on the uh, lowest part of the slide. What I'm talking is that evidence from that period is usually ex post evidence. No one is able to predict very well the moment uh, people will be running away from the country, which means we are not conducting research just in case. We don't do that. But, okay, and it comes in the moment, then you have dislocation. That's the moment people are flying, uh, flying uh, away, uh, but they are uh, also living in the uh, refugee camps, in the war zones, and uh, they are deprived of many elements of identity. And then, again, there are very few research evidence on that. Very few people go to refugee camp trying to understand what the refugees are for, uh, passing through. What is happening more often than not, some organizations are coming, distribute the questionnaire, which is just translated in the language of refugee, not caring much about anything, and bringing the questionnaire back and say, oh, we've conducted research with refugees. Mm -mm. You distributed questionnaire among refugees, but it's not, you didn't conduct research. And then you have relocation, and that's the period from which most of the research results are coming from, because it's safe. 
refugees are in the safe country, country of asylum. You can approach them without risking anything. And yeah, and that's the, uh, that's the part on which often you assume they are safe. Mm, they are safe from physical dangers, but they are not safe at all because of asylum procedures which could uh, finish very negative way because of the stress and because loss of psychosocial support, um, structures and position. And uh, here let us look on uh, agency. I'm just mentioning it without going into details. The concept is all well to known. Uh, just the scheme by Bandura, everybody knows. But here I would like to um, point your attention to the fact what the agency is in the refugee situation. Depending when, during status determination um, procedure, good refugee is someone absolutely passive, the one who doesn't make any problem. He or she is sitting in the refugee camp and obediently accepts meals and just passing the days. But then, bad refugee is the refugee on this period who, for example, wants to go outside the camp and earn some extra money. That's the bad refugee. And the popular discourse, they are not refugees. They came here to earn money. Illogical, right. But then you have the second stage. People are receiving humanitarian protection and everything changes. Those who are active are good refugees. But those who are passive and traumatized and suffering on very difficult mental conditions are bogus refugees because they don't want to contribute, right? So they benefit from us. Perfectly logical, isn't it? Um, and also speaking of uh, agency, very few research makes a difference between genders and the agency gender specific looks very different. Look on what are the characteristics of the women, agentic women refugees. When you take the first three points, that's what they want and this is where they show the agency. The last point is what the government sometimes wants and, uh, and why also uh, organizations which are helping, oh, refugee women are so passive. You just cannot, cannot help. They don't go to work outside. They stay all the time at home. Just happen to forget cultural context for that. And um, how we can search for an agency of refugees in more sensitive way, I would say the concept of the goal theory introduced by Ari Kruglanski might be quite useful because he, he shows that actually people pursuing the goals, they might pursue conflicting goals and that is, however, their agency. Right, and uh, so they, I, I, I think we need a bit more refined approach. But also, uh, we need to ask how refugees see agency. See, what is this wedding in the refugee camp in Kurdistan? What is here, the burial? And why I'm, I'm bringing this picture, please have a look again on the quotation from Barbara Harrelbond. Right? So, uh, I think it's the message, right? Yeah, and uh, here I, I like to show you again from the women perspective, the agency of people who are in the country of the safe asylum. This is organization, Women on the Road, Chechen organization operating in 
Poland. See what they do. They contribute to other refugees. They contribute to local community. Chechen women, at least the group with whom I do cooperate, are extremely gifted artistically. And they not only help women in the other refugee women in the refugee centers to make own dresses, but they also made a very exquisite dresses for the local choir in the city of Gdansk, in which they are located. Uh, to, um, to order these dresses would cost you fortune. They got just the material and they made it. They said that's the way they want to contribute and say thank you to local community. It's had hardly passive strategy. Um, but the uh, agency has the limitation. Legal framework of destination country, lack of competencies of clinical research, uh, um, clinical personnel and researchers, and as I said before, vested interest of state and humanitarian agencies. A lot of them are really interested in keeping refugees in limbo. And here we are moving to, to challenge number two and uh, not going into too many details. I'm prepared to do so, but not now. We have to say we are dealing with category fallacy. Uh, Kleiman in 1980 already found that, that we assume, we assume that uh, uh, the same concept applies all over. The Western concept applies to non-Western situation. Well, in fact, it does, it does not. And here, um, just a story about tsunami on Sri Lanka in 2004, when uh, people were really devastated. And a lot of NGOs came, including clinical researchers, came to uh, Sri Lanka. And what they wanted to do was to cure people in the way uh, in the way which they believe will be most helpful. And this was, for example, here in the quotation mark, uh, cry, cry, it will make feel you better. Mind you, you are talking Hindu and Buddhist population. Or come to family awareness session. Disclose whatever most secret in your family publicly. It will help you. Big question mark. Um, and, of course, a trauma as such, uh, as such has changed over different um, def definitions. And if you look, uh, look on DSM across the years, uh, it's not the same. It changes, it takes and removes from the focus of attention different aspects. But generally speaking, we need to keep in mind that trauma is the composite structure and against, I refer you to Kiermaier. And then, when you think about the research on, uh, on refugees, you may say that in the mainline uh, psychology, you are talking basically about people moving between new locations, old and new, while culture sensitive is the psychology which puts attention about moving between different cultures. And this is what is happening. And here, the consequences of these methodological approaches are really strong. And uh, I'm just kind of shamelessly advertising a book in which they are elaborated. Uh, that's the Brill publication from 2021, uh, in which the details of the research instruments, what are the most common mistakes, and how do you do with uh, appropriation of the measures to, um, uh, to po refugee population is, a pro is really described. And in the quantitative methods, just to make it short, we, if very often, we just translate words, but not words, okay? And uh, condition for sound translation is money consuming, time consuming. It's not easy at all. And uh, the one of the most common mistakes you have uh, in the Western-based questionnaire, you have church. Then you prepare for other population because you enter mosque, 
Okay, then I'm wondering, have you ever been in the church and in the mosque or neither? And um, the better point of departure is social constructivism, which means very few cases when people do research instruments with refugees in the population and cultural adaptation, which goes over translating words and uh, applying cultural uh, concepts, locus of control, role of emotions in different cultures. And again, I'm reminding the, uh, the book by Abdullah M uh, Rahman, uh, who really deals with the, with the issue. And some concepts, patience doesn't enjoy very high reputation in the Western context, contrary. To the, uh, to the Muslim context. And in qualitative methods, there are several. I just like to draw your attention to cultural formulation interview, which is the mm, method published by American Psychological Association. So validated approach, which makes the whole different, uh, whole different uh, um, point of departure for learning about the client's problem. And then the third one, the third challenge, as I said, situation of researcher. I would say the ethic committees are very often kind of one-sided. They protect people who are in the research sample. Very rarely, if ever, they protect researcher. While in the same time, in the research protocol, it needs to be entered a measure how possibly you could protect the researcher who is going into the field. Because researcher is not only experiencing emotional exhaustion to listening to highly emotional, intense narratives. Also struggles with the roles which are mutually exclusive. Researcher, sympathetic listeners. Wh who am I? in this point. I've experienced this myself in Istanbul. And then mm, researcher experiences vulnerability in the context, even in so-called safe context, like the permanent asylum place they are. It's not very friendly. You wouldn't like to go in next to Aqaba to refugee camp in Jordan. I was permitted to go there only because of intermediate of local NGOs. If I would just go there, I'm not saying bad things would happen, but not good things happen either. And when we uh, conducting this research, um, we are experiencing secondary traumatic stress, we are experiencing vicarious trauma and compassion fatigue. And, the, and also, we are a bearers of the witness statements, which in case of casual disclosure, will destroy life, people back home. And we have to struggle with that. That's why I'm always saying my doctoral students or my master students, you have to make a, several provisions not to disclose this material completely and with, uh, without uh, intention, because you are responsible for a bunch of people, not just your respondent, people back home. And what I want you to take home as the points, just four things. First of all, don't believe in the discourse who refugees are, as presented in the media. Mm -mm. Then your research instruments must be constructed with the collaboration of, uh, with the refugee community. Very few scholars has the courage to do so. Well, uh, Rasmussen, Müller and Rasmussen in their Afghani stress in trauma scale have done this in Kabul, in Kabul during the war. But other than that, it's not happening that frequently. Then, 
take the measures to protect yourself. You are the most important tool. If you, professor, take the measures to protect your students and uh, think over how you can supervise them also in the fieldwork. Uh, put the line, emergency line, but it doesn't mean that you can do anything. And finally, if you are sitting on the ethic committee, please remember your responsibility extends beyond the boardroom. You are not only respond, uh, you are not only respond, uh, will be uh, responsive to community which is in the research, but also people to whom you give a clearance. Thank you.